Distorted Wish, Chapter 4, Fur Lining Marinette's plan came up with nothing. Nada. Rien. Niente. Not for lack of trying, however. Oh, she tried, narrowing her eyes and raising her shields, sneaking around while being gentle enough to keep Hawk Moth from pushing for more complete control of Valor. The boy definitely had strong willpower to have avoided falling so deep into Hawk Moth's clutches as to forget himself. But if she pushed too hard, the emotional hurt would give Hawk Moth an opening. She was so sure that a sneaky approach would be best. If Alar really had Shanwar's Kwame and, potentially, his Miraculous as well, she couldn't risk a fight where her partner couldn't back her up. It was so obvious that this was Hawk Moth's work. Shanwar may have been an idiot, but he would never volunteer up his identity. Ladybug had warned heavily against that, and he was too smitten to go against her. For once, Marinette didn't mind his crush, and was just glad she had such a loyal partner. Miraculous powers didn't even work like Aller has shown off. They didn't carry over to their civilian forms. Her yo-yo had never remained when she wasn't in the suit, and she was sure someone would have recognized Shaz Baton before this. On top of that, the Shah she knew didn't seem like someone coming from a bad home life. He never dropped any obvious hints, never showed up with bruises or previous injuries, and overall seemed like a well-adjusted guy, if something of a clown. But Marinette was ready to throw in the towel and call on Tiki by the end of the day. They had turned the couch in her bedroom into a bed together, a la gently moving. They had turned the couch in her bedroom into a bed together, Alar gingerly moving Plag from one spot to another, but never so far away and sheltered enough that Tiki could swoop in to do her own investigations. Marinette crafted her questions carefully. Plag was clearly a soft spot for Alar, fully taking to the role of Chanoir. Dinner came up with zero success either. Her suggestion of giving Plag peace and quiet was brushed off in favor of keeping in close tucked away in a pocket. Little tidbits of cheese went missing from Aller's plate into there. If nothing else, she learned something about Aller's home life, his reasoning behind this evident longing for escaping to the world of fighting crime. His father? An absent jerk. Never around and always cold. Strict. It was all too obvious in the surprise and fascination he showed to the Dupin Sheng family chatting around the table, and the stark manners with which he ate. Dinner was always a social event for the Dupin Shangs, but it was a new experience for Aller. Marinette almost worried the novelty and unfamiliarity would set off Akuma rage, and her tension melted when it didn't. As Marinette collapsed into bed, staring up at the ceiling, she wondered how she could have so badly messed this up. Should she have poked more? Asked more? Or maybe invited him to join her in more activities, more experiences in a house that wasn't oppressed by loneliness and judgment? At least she could give Aller a warming place to stay on this cold evening, away from a cold father. She turned off the lights when she could see Aller settling into bed b below her loft and sighed, turning over in bed. Ladybug and Chanoir would have to pop this mystery instead. Marinette blinked, a noise catching her attention. She quickly shut her eyes again, realizing it was Aller making his move. She felt the night breeze, then it all stopped as the trapdoor shut again. She sat up. Tiki, we have to go. As soon as Sha thought that Marinette had fallen asleep, he quietly slipped out of the makeshift bed. Even in the dark, he could make out the pictures that hung on her walls, even two framed photos. When he had noticed the first few photos of his civilian identity, cut out from magazines and ads he had featured in, he had to look twice, and couldn't help but suddenly notice the rest of them. Ads, magazines, snapshot stills from commercials and runways, even packaging from the perfume named after him. It had taken an enormous amount of willpower not to react in that moment. A little weird, yes, but from what he had seen on the internet, average stan culture. She hadn't asked him for an autograph or photos yet, so clearly Marinette wasn't obsessed to an, o to an unhealthy level. Just the average level of obsessed. The pictures struck him as off, but he couldn't quite put his finger on why. It didn't take long to climb the stairs, getting ever closer to Marinette's bed, and he used his baton for the leverage to get above without disturbing her bed. Xia pulled himself up through the trap door and closed it behind him quietly. Plague, claws out, he whispered. Black bubbled over him. Once he was sufficiently masked, he took off, racing to the end of the rails of the balcony to get a running start, putting distance between him and the bakery. 
He caught flashes of himself in glimmering windows and brittle metal. Mask in place, full suit, and gave him hope for Plague's well-being and his ability to get fully into the escapism of a superhero. Ladybug had been adamant that they should keep their identities from each other, and he felt that his current living situation qualified under that, even if he wasn't sure if that rule would hold up well after tonight. He leaped onto another roof and paused, breathing in the frosty pear's air, what I wouldn't give for a fur coat right now. He fiddled with his baton, the communicator popping up from the top, the miniature screen lighting up. Your prince reporting for duty, my lady, he purred. Three dots bounced on the screen. Ladybug's face filled the screen a moment later. He could hear her teeth chattering through the connection, but she looked glad to see him. Before she could say anything, he said, something came up and I need to talk to you. Uh, this clearly took her off guard. All right, I'll be right over. Are you okay, Sha? The sight of you is already making me feel better, my lady. Ladybug rolled her eyes and the connection abruptly cut off. Sha allowed his baton to slide in his hands, grabbing the very end of it before it could drop off the side of the building. He idly tapped out a tune with it on the edge of the roof as he waited. Paris glittered in the frosty air. She wasn't quiet. Like her namesake, she flitted through the air with an almost silent flutter of the wind. Sha laid back, resting on his elbows as he craned his neck. She had evidently adjusted for the colder weather, a spotted cloak around her shoulders, a fur of otherworldly quality brushing her neck. My lady, he greeted, and she returned it with a regal nod. So what is this about, Sha? Ladybug walked over to the edge with him, dropping down to look over the city with him. He leaned closer to her, brushing against the soft fur. It still smelled like her, to his relief. Ladybug pushed him back a respectable distance and pulled the cloak closer. So... She raised an eyebrow at his unmoving smile. What did you want to talk about? Right, that. Sorry. Got distracted, he said. So distracted. He reluctantly moved his gaze to the city. During that Akuma fight today, I got into some trouble. He grimaced, the echoes of Alia's voice in his head, begging him to wake up. My transformation ran out in front of a civilian. She knows, well, two civilians now. But you probably have one or two close friends you've already told, right? He turned to Ladybug to find a frown. A strange look on her face, something akin to disappointment. Disappointment that he had failed to keep the ultimate secret exactly that. A secret. They didn't even know each other's faces beyond the mask. No, she said softly, shaking her head minutely. I've kept it a secret. Sha laughed. Guess I've just got bad luck, huh? My lady plays by the rules, and I'm the cat that comes and knocks the vase off the table. I'm sure just this once, letting the secret slip will be fine. It's not like I'm attached to any big-name celebrity or anything like that. Nobody will care. Sha, what do you... Flag, claws off. Sha didn't look to see Ladybug's reaction. For a moment his heart stuttered, thinking he made a mistake, that he would be sitting there, revealing himself as the famous teen model like an idiot. But then his canines cut on his lips, his eyesight didn't dim from the night vision the suit gave him, and the baton still hung from his hand. Running a hand through his hair, it felt coarser and more unkempt than any aggressed model would be allowed to have. Nothing that felt remotely like starched collar perfect model Adrian. He pulled out a piece of cheese that he'd snagged from the bakery, and Plague zipped straight for it. The Kwame glanced to Ladybug, but turned away from both superheroes, evidently not pleased with this turnout. He'll come around, Sha said. I go by the name Alar, but that's not my real name. It's not? Sha glanced to Ladybug and found her with a hand over her mouth, hiding her shock at his easy trust. He shook his head. Nope, I think something got messed up in the transformation, he explained. This isn't my real face. Come on, you didn't think I'd really be this ruggedly handsome behind the mask, did you? He laughed, but Ladybug was silent. Emotions flitted over her face, guilt and regret settling in her eyes, glassy behind the mask. My baton doesn't even disappear now, he added, spinning it in one hand, marveling at how easy the action came to him. I... Sha. My eyes look more cat-like like this. I look so fierce I can't help but check myself out in the mirror. Chanoir. Shenoir stopped, his words cut off by the stern hurt in her tone, then frowned, looking over the edge of the roof to avoid her eyes. Ladybug sighed and sat beside him on the roof. He saw out of the corner of his eye how her hands hesitated to reach for him. He was teetering on the edge of the roof out of his suit. Of course she wouldn't want him to fall and hurt himself. But the miraculous reflexes still twitched in his muscles, assuring him very well that he would be just fine to reach out and jam his baton on the side of the building, on the way down to break his fall, if he didn't take it in a casual flip and somersault. 
Is this why you didn't come back after I purified the Akuma? Ladybug asked. We always fist bump after an Akuma. I knew you were running out of paws on your ring, so I thought you just didn't have the time to meet up right after. I knew we cut it pretty close sometimes, but I don't blame you for any of this, my lady. I know you don't, Shao, but we're supposed to be a team. I should have at least run back to check on you. I mean, if I had gotten out of the suit properly, you would have you would have been better not to compromise my identity or yours, he pointed out. Your earrings were beeping, too. He put a hand on her thigh, hoping that was a reassuring gesture. She tensed. Sha, Ladybug wrapped a strong arm around his waist, keeping him anchored there. He chuckled. There's hardly any need to worry, my lady. I told you, I'm not completely detransformed. I still have all that makes me Sha Noir. Well, except maybe the ears and tails. Regrettable, really. I should get one of those cat ear headbands that are all the rage right now. You know, I've never bought my own merch before. Ladybug opened her mouth, but he didn't pay attention to her, smacking his hands down on the ledge and launching himself off. Chanoir! Cha rolled into a flip in the air, his baton already snapping out to extend, eyes darting to find just the right nook to jam it into. Ladybug's yo-yo flickered past him. The string looped around him just as his baton jammed into the side of the building, stopping his descent. He grabbed onto the baton with both hands and flung himself over it to come to a steady perch on the thin balance beam. Well, that was the original plan, anyway. With the yo-yo string in the way, he managed to get himself tangled in it, his baton adding to the equation. I'm so, so, so sorry, Sha. Ladybug fretted over him, creeping down the ledges of the building to begin untying him from her rather sturdy yo-yo trap. You were just so close to the edge, and you didn't have the mask on, and you just jumped, and I... Shanoa laughed. His lady didn't seem to think it was as funny. Take some time to clear your head, kitty, Ladybug sighed, shaking her head. Patrol is cancelled tonight. Plague transformed him with clear reluctance, but strangely enough, no protests or fights for more cheese bribes. They split off, leaping in opposite directions. Per request, Shanoir went in the opposite direction of Marinette's house, hoping his ladybug was right and that a few rounds around Paris in the cool winter air would do him some good. Per habit, Ladybug went off in exactly the opposite direction of him. Shanoir landed on Marinette's balcony and looked up at the sky. Clouds had drifted over to cover the moon during his leaping laps through Paris. He spent a few minutes staring up at it, his heart and breathing slowing, the rush of running through cool air fading, leaving him a lost kitty at someone's door. Black swirled off his skin, and he caught Plague in his hand. Plague, why don't we get a cool suit upgrade? Something warmer for the winter, maybe? He mused, watching the moon as he gently brushed Plague's ears down with his thumb. My lady looked so regal with that fur lining. He glanced down when he didn't get a reply inside. The Kwame had passed out, fast asleep once more. He turned and crept back inside Marinette's bedroom, closing the trap door as quietly as possible, and managed to avoid waking Marinette in his descent down. Before climbing back into his makeshift bed, he stopped, his green eyes landing on a poster of himself. No, not himself. Adrian aggressed. He stared at it with a frown, stuck on how viewing it as a mirror seemed so, so wrong. The celebrity life had never been him, those smiles had never been him, and tomorrow, they still wouldn't be him. Tomorrow, that smile would be the farthest thing from him, as it looked like he wasn't about to head home soon after all. It was funny, he thought with no humor, tearing his eyes away from that mirror that wasn't a mirror, that he had been de denying all that was the name Adrian by taking on the mask of Chanoir, and now, trying to go home, he was being denied ownership of his own identity, or... Sha shook his head and headed to bed. He wasn't sure what was the mask and what wasn't anymore. End of chapter 4